Bob Goldsmith. He is the owner and tour guide of Detroit Urban Adventures. Bob, thank you for being with us. How did you come up with this? Oh, um, I've been giving tours first as a volunteer, and that was with Preservation Wayne. They now go by the name Preservation Detroit. But then I started Detroit Tour Connections as sort of a little second business of mine. Um, my main thing was being a lawyer, and uh, Detroit Tour Connections was, was sort of like private tours, but then I had like a weekly series of tours. But then I got contacted by a company called Urban Adventures that's from uh, really based out of Australia, and they're worldwide. Um, they contacted me back in 2010 to see if I would be their guy in Detroit. They had sort of seen my website for my other tour company. And when I asked what it meant, it meant offering at least two tours, at least five days a week, and at least nine months of the year. And I did have some friends and family saying, you can't do that, you've got a law practice. And I sort of thought that I could do it. I could offer tours in the afternoons, five days a week, and still have my mornings to practice law. So, um, so I got it started really back in 2011. And we do like a nine month season, March 1st through November 30th. And this, uh, this was our 10th year of doing that. So when I say R, it's mostly a one man operation. Every year I have a couple people kind of giving me a little bit of backup. So how has it been for you during the pandemic, especially in the beginning when everything was shut down? Right, right. Uh, it's been a rough year. Uh, we had just started our season March 1st. And then before too long, we were shutting down during March. Uh, we remained shut down completely April, May, and June. So that was a large part of our season. And then we started up uh, July, August, September. You know, it's been pretty slow. Um, it almost seems like October is opening up a little more. A uh, few more people taking the tours now. And uh, we've got a little more time left in our season before the cold weather hits. But we'll, we're going to keep going this year through the end of the year. And then uh, we normally don't do December. We might also do January and February, just if we get some calls and people want a tour and everybody's bundled up, we'll, uh, we'll give them a tour. Bob Goldsmith with us. He is the owner and tour guide at Detroit, Detroit Urban Adventures, joining us on the Oakland County Megacast. Bob, for those that have not heard of Detroit Urban Adventure, uh, Adventures or have not gone on this experience, Take us a little bit into what they will experience when they go on one of these tours. What can people expect? Yep, they're um, a two hour tour and you'll meet at a coffee shop downtown when it's a downtown tour. Uh, we've got a meeting place in Corktown for our Corktown tour. And then we just kind of go from there. Uh, we're giving you background and history, uh, architecture. Uh, when we're downtown, there's murals and there's sculptures and there's fountains. Um, we're telling you also about the events that take place downtown, but it's just a nice mix, uh, a real informative tour. We have, as our most popular tour, it's called Detroit's Rise, Fall, and Renewal. And that name draws people in, whether they're visitors from out of the country or out of state, or even some locals like to, to hear about the Rise, Fall, and Renewal. And uh, I know about it pretty well. I certainly grew up in this area, but uh, I moved downtown back in 2003, and have lived down there since. Um, I'm in a downtown apartment right now, where, where we're talking from, I guess. But uh, in any event, like when I moved down here, there were just so many more empty buildings. I mean, the David Whitney was empty, Broadway Tower was empty. We didn't have the uh, Element Hotel. We didn't have the Siren Hotel. You know, so it's just really lots and lots and lots of changes over the years that I've been down here, and that's what we're telling people about on the tour, uh, how some of these buildings had like a first life and then so many years being empty and then getting a second life, uh, you know, sometimes very recently. And then telling them uh, the new things that have been built, the, the ballparks and uh, stadiums and then the new arena. Um, so, you know, people get a good sense of what downtown's about just, just within a couple hours. And plus Detroit's history too. And with that, during the pandemic, a lot of these businesses are suffering has the landscape started to change downtown? Are you still seeing as much growth as was once there or some of the new restaurants and smaller shops closing? Right, um, there's been a couple of closures downtown and, and some things that just maybe haven't reopened since March. Most things are going on like they were in previous years. Um, I mean, obviously there's no crowds for the ballpark. Um, we don't have the concert crowds. 
uh, the people mover is not running and we used to take the people mover on our tour just you know for the heck of it basically uh, we get by without it it's a walking tour and two hours we're just uh, walking without a people mover ride but but that's one thing that's down this year is the people mover um, Q line is down also we didn't really take the Q line on our tours um, now I did mention but one of our tours um, we finish at Detroit Beer Company and uh, you get a complimentary half pint it kind of comes with the price of the tour I guess and uh, you know they're open they also tend to have outdoor seating available so that's a nice way to sort of end the tour um, and then our tour in the morning which is another downtown tour uh, people get either a piece of baklava and that's at a story of pastry shop they're open in Greek town or you get a Coney dog and the Coney places are open too so so that works out so again the tour is basically just like it is uh, in prior years except without the uh, without the people who were right like fewer people walking around downtown uh, there's no doubt about that yeah, and, and with tourism down, are you seeing more people that are locals taking these tours? Well, right. Um, that's almost by definition because we would, in a typical year, get a lot of people from out of the country. And that was kind of a cool thing to sort of be an ambassador and show people from out of the country what Detroit's about. Um, and then we would get a lot of people from around the states as well. And really, you know, probably less than a third of our customers in a typical year were locals and then sometimes they were coming only when they had like an out-of-town guest or something or if they were fairly new to the area um, this year obviously we're not getting the people from out of the country like at all and then as far as people from out of state uh, there's some people who are flying but then there's other people who are taking their trips driving so we're getting more people from you know within a few hours away who decided to take a road trip and come to Detroit um, but yeah we are getting greater percentage of our customers this year are locals just because we're cut off from some of the, uh, the other customers. Bob Goldsmith with us. He is the owner and tour guide of Detroit Urban Adventures. And Bob, obviously one of the questions when you talk about Detroit, I'm sure the issue of safety comes up for a lot of your customers who want to take these tours. Have you ever had a problem uh, on one of your tours at all? Oh, uh, no, no, not at all. And I mean, I've been given tours since 2001, and then these urban adventures tours since uh, 2011. And uh, no, never a problem. Um, downtown's really safe. I mean, personally, I've lived down here since 2003, never really had any issues down here, uh, even when things were a bit rougher down here. Uh, these days, there's security all over, there's cameras pretty much everywhere. Anyone ever does bother you downtown, let them know that you're probably on camera right now. But uh, anyway, no, everything's been fine in that regard. Bob Goldsmith was, uh, with us. He is the owner and tour guide of Detroit Urban Adventures. Joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast. Uh, Bob, just a, a little while left with, with you on today's show. Is there anything coming up that you're expecting will be a, a greater attraction to the city of Detroit or anything that Detroit Urban Adventures is doing in the next few weeks or a few months that may be of particular interest to those who are already maybe uh, interested in taking a tour? Oh, uh, well, we're just offering our regular tours uh, through the rest of the year, a downtown tour in the morning. Uh, we've got uh, our Corktown tour available early afternoon. That's another real nice tour, uh, including like the Michigan Central Railroad Station what's going on that with uh, Ford's re restoration of it. Um, and then our Rise Fall Renewal Tour at 4 o'clock. Um, if people contact us and want a private tour and want something customized, we're often able to do that. Now, with the holidays approaching uh, at Campus Marshes Park, they're going to start putting up the tree and the skating rink's going to start to appear. And, uh, you know, by a certain time in November, the tree's lit up. So. So it's nice to see downtown, which I assume will be decked out for the holidays pretty much uh, normally. So uh, so that's a nice thing towards leading into the holiday season. So Bob, since you're full of Detroit history and knowledge, uh, share a couple tidbits with us about the city that a lot of people would be surprised to know. Oh, um, well, for one thing that our population in 1820 was only about 1500 people we were still just a little nothing in the wilderness even though we had been started back in 1701 um and then after being only 1500 people in 1820 we were at a million people in 1920 
we pretty much went like zero to a million. We went from a little nothing to number four in the U.S. population and really number one in per capita wealth. So that was a hundred year period of a pretty steady growth. Uh, it wasn't just when the auto industry popped up. Uh, it was sort of uh, in a way when, when shipping opened up between the Great Lakes and the East Coast. Uh, that's what really allowed Detroit to grow. That's interesting. I didn't know. And I know there's a, a big push right now to try to get uh, the population back up in the city of Detroit from someone who's been living there for a while now. What's been your experience living in Detroit versus the suburbs? Oh, see, I've loved it. But then I moved right downtown and suddenly I could like walk to work to my office and just go days at a time without driving. Um, now, downtown can only hold so many people just the nature of it. It's kind of small, and then there's space devoted to other things besides residential. Um, and the places that are residential downtown are pretty full. So you might be looking at a neighborhood maybe near downtown, and then maybe you could still walk in for these events. You might be a little further out, and maybe you're a, a bike rider, and you ride your bikes when you're coming downtown. But, but in general, being in the city, whether you're downtown, midtown, somewhere close to where the action is, um, or just there's other good, good neighborhoods to live in. And then I think people also find a real sense of community out in some of these neighborhoods. And then even downtown, which is sort of its own neighborhood, and get to know the people who live here. There's not that many people. And, and you know, it, it's cool. Living in the city is really cool. That's, it's definitely changed a lot, like you said, over the past 10 years. Uh, so many people are starting to move back into the city and obviously it still has its challenges and the pandemic is not helping those challenges at all. But it's great that you're offering these tours and when you see Detroit by foot, you see a very different Detroit as well. You can take time to stop and enjoy some of the art and the architecture and the buildings and with that, what is the one building of people were going to come to the city of Detroit that they should take the time to explore? Sure, um, that'd have to be the Guardian building. Uh, we show that on our morning downtown tour and on our afternoon downtown tour. Um, you're able to see the lobby, you're able to, to look into the banking room. This year we can't get into the banking room and the Pure Detroit store we used to stop at there. They're not open, which is too bad. Um, but yeah, the Guardian building is just outstanding, 1929 Art Deco, way more colorful than your typical building would be, and um, it used to have a nickname, the Cathedral of Finance, so uh, it was in the financial district, which is its enormous bank, really a special building. Bob Goldsmith here with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Quickly, uh, uh, Bob, if people want to take a tour, do you have a limit by how many people are in the group? Do they need to be of the same party now because of COVID? How is that working? Right. Um, Urban Adventures has always been a company with a 12-person maximum. And then, uh, you know, we're sticking with that 12-person maximum. However, uh, we also have like a one or two-person minimum. Uh, somebody signs up, they're going to get the tour even if nobody else has signed up. So often these days, since business is slower, um, we might have only one booking, whether it's a party of two or a party of four. Um, but sometimes we might have a couple of bookings, and let's say we've got eight people, and it's a party of two, a party of two, a party of four. It's possible, since it's a walking tour, uh, to spread people out, you know, have uh, this party here, that party there, that party there, and, and me so far away from them, and everybody can hear me, and, and it works out fine. And then we go walking down the street. Uh, again, people can kind of be socially distanced. So, uh, so that part works out fine. Um, when we do go inside buildings, uh, people have to put their mask on for that. Um, some people choose to wear a mask during the whole tour when we're outside as well. But, um, but otherwise, everything works out nicely. We're, we're in small groups. Bob Goldsmith with us. He is the owner and tour guide at Detroit Urban Adventures, joining us on the Oakland County Megacast. Bob, just another few minutes with you before I will have to say goodbye. Uh, is there anything else that you would like our audience to know about Detroit, uh, Detroit Urban Adventures or anything else that we haven't talked about already today? Right. Um, it's easy to sign up. You would just go to DetroitUrbanAdventures.com, and then you'd see what our tours are. 
see the descriptions, see reviews. Uh, then you just pick the tour that you want. Uh, they're each at a certain time of day, so you might pick by what time of day you have available, or you might pick by which tour you prefer. And then uh, you just kind of basically enter the date that you want and the number of people that you're booking for, and then you just pay by credit card, and you're good to go. Um, you'll get a voucher. Um, you don't really need to bring it, or it might be like on your phone if you wanted to show it to us, but we, we basically know who's coming and who to expect, and we, uh, we meet you there. Um, like I said, the tours tend to meet at a coffee shop right downtown on Broadway. I'll put in a little nod to Ash Supply Company, that's the name of the coffee shop. Um, but anyway, yeah, just go to DetroitUrbanAdventures.com, and it's very easy to sign up. If people have questions, if people wanted like a private tour, um, then they could just call us. And we've got, uh, you know, phone number 313-701-1900. So basically the phone or the internet. That's great. Uh, Detroit's a beautiful city, especially the downtown area. They've done amazing things. Quickly, uh, how much are the tours? Right, they're just 29 a person. And um, we pack in a lot. People, whether they're locals or visitors from out of town, everybody always feels like they're getting their money's worth. Um, as I said, they do come with um, in the morning tour, either a piece of baklava when we're in Greek town or the Coney Dog too, so that's part of the price. And then the other tours, um, the afternoon tours tend to come with a beer at the end, whether it's Detroit Beer Company. Uh, Corktown tour, we used to go to the Gaelic League, but now we're substituting like batch brewing or something like that for, for the beer. So um, yeah, with the price of 29, um, you really do learn a lot on our tours and, and, and they're very enjoyable. It's, a, it's not just architecture, uh, they're not boring. It's it's history, it's stories, it's art, it's, it's a lot of nice, nice stuff. I always like to give people experiences as a gift, and this is definitely a good experience to give someone. So maybe instead of the holidays, you can get them a gift certificate, let them go on one of your tours. Bob, thanks so much for being with us. We so appreciate it. Thank you, and I uh, hope people sign up, whether it's this year as the weather gets colder, or we'll be uh, back at it next year when the weather warms up in spring for sure. Definitely. And can people buy gift certificates, by the way? Um, they can call me and we can, yes, figure that out. I, we, we should be able to arrange that. I, yeah, okay. I'll get that arranged. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we, we can make anything happen. Bob, thanks for being with us. He's a lawyer in the morning and a tour guide in the afternoon and uh, definitely passionate about Detroit and has a lot of stories to tell. So check them out, Detroit Urban Adventures.